All right, guys. Well, in this video, what I'm going to be talking about is Zulip, which is a chat client that works really well for distributed teams. So a lot of people like using Slack. For me personally, I really don't like using Slack. And, you know, one of the reasons and probably the main reason is because of the way that uh, chats and Slack, like it's happens in real time. And this is one of the reasons why you'll find some people that prefer to communicate in email or um, you know one of these other uh, formats rather than a real-time communication like like Slack, uh, like Skype, and things like that. So Zulip is kind of based on the on the real time, uh, you know avoiding real-time chat. And the big idea of that is because there's this debate between immediacy and asynchronous chat. So immediacy is when you can see the bubbles of someone actually typing back to you, like if you're talking in Facebook Messenger, and you kind of feel like you need to hang on a little bit and actually reply to them, you know, because they're waiting for a response. Whereas if you go and you buy into asynchronous chat, what happens is you don't have that. And so asynchronous chat is really important for deep work because you're not going to be, you're not going to see that notification come up. You're not going to be, you know, bugged about it and, you know, kind of have your focus shift, right? So if you are, are a believer in the, in the fact that we're not really multitaskers, we're really switching from one task to another. And each time we switch, we lose time. Then Zulip is, is something that you should really look at for your teams. Um, they have apps for every platform. They have it for the web, which is really good. They have it for desktop uh, on Mac and also on uh, Linux, and they have it on, on mobile as well. Now, it's also open source, um, and that's really good with it. They've got uh, extensive documentation uh, for it, and it integrates with a whole bunch of, um, of you know, things that you might need to, uh, to integrate it with, um, and they have a, an API, okay? Uh, and what I like about it, uh, there's a couple things I like about it, but you know, the pricing is really good as well. Um, for small teams, like let's say you're a digital team, maybe a solo entrepreneur, something like that, it's free. So this is great for light use. Um, and where a lot of the other chat clients kind of make you upgrade or kind of force you into upgrading is with the search history, right? And if you have uh, a little bit of search history uh, and then it goes away after a month, you know, you might find, ah, you know, I need something, you know, this project's taking a little bit longer and I need to go back in and, uh, and have more of that. With the Zulip um, free plan, um, this is a Zulip cloud, so you can self-host it as well. But, you know, if you're not a programmer, you're probably gonna want to use the cloud. They'll actually store 10,000 messages of search history, which is pretty significant, and five gigabytes uh, total, right? Um, and so it's a full-featured chat service, integrations. You can have advanced roles and permissions, which is really important, and also guest accounts. So if you invite someone on to just talk about one thing, um, you can do that as well. And that's all with the free plan. And then they have the standard plan, which has, of course, unlimited uh, search history. Um, you know, file storage, uh, message retention po uh, policies, and you can brand it yourself and, and that sort of thing. Um, and it's very reasonable, reasonably priced, right? So getting back to asynchronous chat, I asked ChatGPT, what, what, uh, what, what's the big deal about asynchronous chat? And this is where there's a time delay between messages sent and received, okay? Um, so again, I mentioned this before versus synchronous chat, which we're all familiar with in terms of Facebook Messenger, uh, and, and things like that where they're exchanging real time. And so the thing is for me, it really allows for more flexibility and uh, it says flexibility and communication and it allows me to do deep work and then respond when, when I want to, right? And that's what's good about, you know, if people message me an email, you know, I don't need to, if I'm not in my email, I'm not gonna see that and I'm not going to feel the need to respond. I can focus on what I'm doing and then at the appropriate time where I block my day, then I can, you know, get back to that and it can still be all threaded and nestled together. However, unlike email, you don't have this long thing with this, this, uh, these, these, uh, you know, quotes being sent back and forth, and it turns into a, a long thread, right? So it has all that, uh, all the benefits of having a smaller chat client. 
So it's really good for remote teams, um, particularly for you know different time zones and schedules. Oftentimes I'm working with um, uh, remote staff in different locations, you know, and this is something that like, you know, no one really that I work with is in my own time zone. And so again, you know, you know, if I'm in my middle of my work day, I can send a message and I know, you know, I'm going to get, uh, get a message back, um, when it's, when they're on, when they're, you know, when they're going to be focused and fully engaged. So, um, yeah, so and it can also be searched, right? So this is a lot easier if you are communicating. You'll you'll understand that if you're just going back and forth with your team through email, uh, search can be a bit of a problem because it will pull up other things that are unrelated, particularly if you've got uh, you know lots of archived emails and things like that. So there's um, a lot of benefits to it uh, when you install the app on the Mac, you can create an organization and then you can actually import from, you know, Slack, Mattermost, Gitter or uh, Rocket Chat and you can get started that way. Okay. Um, so overall, um, I'll just give you a, a view of what it looks here. You know, they have different streams. So streams are like uh, channels, uh, but each stream has a topic. So topics are, are unique to Zulip. So you can kind of, to me, it makes more sense that you can organize things in channels and then talk about, uh, you know, different items in that. Um, and in this way, it's almost acting like a, um, you know, like a, like a project management type of, uh, of situation. And so you can organize all the uh, conversations and it keeps it all on topic, right? So this is good if, you as the business owner can, you know, really set up different topics that people are going to be talking about and you're not going to have, you know, random gifts and stuff just getting in the way and people missing things because of that. So overall, um, you know, the main thing about Zulip is uh, that I wanted to mention is the context, right? And that's what I find, uh, you know, frustrating with a lot of other chat clients is it, it loses that context, um, you know, because, you know, same with uh, same with Discord or Slack, you know, you can just kind of get out of hand and you can lose the context of what people are talking about. And that's what's really good about the topics in Zulip. So anyhow, um, you can go here. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, you can go there and uh, check out Zulip. I'll also put a link to um, a place where there's a lot of uh, software, uh, different uh, deals and things like that, that can save you a lot of money. Um, you know, so you're not having a lot of really expensive fees that are eating into your ROI and profits, particularly if you are a solo entrepreneur or maybe you have a small team with you. Anyhow, check out Zulip. If you used it before, let me know what your experience is in, in the comments. And as always, give this video a like and subscribe. It does help me reach new users, or new viewers on, uh, on YouTube and keep it locked in. All right, we'll see you in the next video.